I'm Dan Galush and welcome to another edition of Shoot and Plink. Hey, I'm setting up my new Caldwell table here. It's a portable shooting table. That's not what we're going to be talking about. In fact, right here, we've already reviewed this, by the way. This is an ATI Nova uh, sniper rifle. It's an AT97 Elite, they call it. We're going to be using that to test some pellets that Doc McKay of Plinking Over Paper Face Group uh, had suggested. And we did that a while back with the, uh, it was the Buckmark, the Browning Buckmark pellet gun. And we tested those and we found out that the medium worked a little bit better than the Magnum. Well, I thought, and I mentioned it at the time, about this sniper rifle. I'm just wondering how sniper pellets would work in what is called the sniper rifle. And this is a brake barrel, very hard brake barrel, by the way, very heavy. Uh, and we're going to be firing at some tires. We're going to shoot some rounds at the left side. That'll be the medium pellets. Then we're going to fire the magnums to the right side. Then we're going to do a little bit of plinking too. But uh, like I said, we're going to line this up and see what we can do with it. And I'm going to turn the cameras around so you can see the target and then we're going to start shooting. I think we've got enough of that. Uh, this thing's hard to break anyway. But we're going to try to do some plinking now and see how that works. We're going to go after those uh, cardboard targets that you see down there. So let's get those uh, lined up a little bit better. Now you can see there are six of them. I'm going to shoot the left three with the medium snipers and the right three with the magnums, just like we did with the targets. Well, I've picked up the targets and uh, also some of our plinking targets here, the cardboard, toilet paper roll things. And uh, as I figured, the heavier weight magnums were going to fire lower. Now, out of fairness to them, this scope may be off. I haven't fired this gun in a long time. And you do a lot of banging around with it, with this particular model, because it is so heavy to break the barrel. In fact, while I was doing that, you'll notice all I've got is the top to this medium sniper because the rest of the pellets are on the ground. I'm going to have to pick them up uh, and knock them off. That's one problem with this Caldwell table, by the way. It's very, very slick. It needs some sort of carpeting or something or other on top of it, but that would be another review. And uh, I purchased this thing thinking that, well, yeah, as you know, I'm not big on tables. I'd rather shoot freestanding. And I wish I'd have done that with these, but I thought, we've got a sniper rifle, we've got sniper pellets, let's see what's going to happen. Well, as far as the targets go, uh, as figures, we got the one lower than the other. Uh, this was the mediums right here and this was the magnums. Now the magnums did fire lower but I was also bringing the scope up to about here and putting it there so that I, and I was still firing low. Same over here, I, I brought the scope probably up to about the top of that triangle 
little circle right there with the triangle and uh, it was still firing low so you know like I said it could be the scope I don't know I'd have to shoot another pellet in it to find out but this still gives us the idea uh, these right here they've got a weight of um, 8 849 and that is the magnums are like 1497 so you got a lot of difference in weight now Doc McKay he came up with the idea there's also a sniper light pellet now I don't know what the weight of that was I didn't really find it uh, Linda Jordan of the same group planking over paper and also she's got a Facebook group uh, with another gentleman of David Struthers and uh, they have got it's called uh, air air rifles and targets or air, air pistols and then rifles and targets or something or other like that and um, she has done a lot of good shooting with these pellets and testing them out with the different things she's she's done them with the same pistol that I have the bug mark and also some other rifles that she's got uh, a lot of the Umarek stuff but like I said I had this sniper rifle I wanted to try it but boy I tell you this this son of a gun gives you a workout on the brake barrel the brake barrel is really really hard on this thing it's got a heavy brake and even a close um, but uh, I mean it did shoot and I was able to plank and we weren't talking about these much here I had to shoot a couple of them twice as you see and they were also shooting a little low uh, this is the one that was with the uh, uh, the heavy one and it shot right here put a pretty good hole out the back and it, it was shooting low I mean I was aiming right up here and it hit down here so like I said they are falling low and this particular gun is over a thousand feet per second I know I uh, can't remember the exact number on it but uh, I know it is over a thousand and it's still those pellets I don't know uh, I, I'm I'm not overjoyed with them let's say and uh, I'd have done just as well with my RWS hobby pellets in fact I'm much better with those uh, and the Powerball pellets that's another one that I've done very well with uh, just straight old uh, Crossman pellet has worked well but I probably out of all of them, the RWS I, I like those about as well as anything and I kind of keep those for my special type thing these H&N sniper pellets I'm I'm sure they have got their use I'm sure people have done well with them with different guns but it's just like any other pellet each one kind of fits into a different gun and uh, this one's kind of an odd animal anyway and that's one reason again why I used it it's, uh, it's so we tested it out and we seen what happened and uh, now Doc can see what happens with a regular sniper rifle he does a lot of the pistol shooting on the plinking and that so anyway hopefully this has shed a little bit more light on him and until next time shoot safe and have a great day of plinking